Now in the psychology world, we call gut reactions somatic markers. That's the technical term for it. And this is any time where your emotions really guide or bias your decision making. And this is happening all the time. I think a lot of people try to make reasonable decisions by pushing emotions aside. Uh, instead of using emotions, they rely on logic and they try to think through things rationally. But the argument that I'm going to make in this series is that there's no such thing as pure rational thought. Emotions are always there to help guide us through our everyday decision-making process. Here's an example. If I asked you how your day was, what would you say? Now, for most of you, you have an immediate response to this. My day was good. Uh, it's, it's been okay, actually. Today was not that great of a day. But what you did not do was go through every single moment of your day, the entire day, weighing each and every moment precisely and taking an average of how much you liked or disliked the things that happened since you got out of bed. We just don't do that. If you had to go through that process every time somebody asked you how your day was, it would take you three days to respond to that question. We simply can't use pure logic to respond. We have to use a gut decision, a gut reaction to that question. Because if we relied only on logic, it would take forever. So the hypothesis here with somatic markers is that pure logic takes too long. And so emotions help make shortcuts to decision making. And these emotional or mental shortcuts are called somatic markers, and more commonly in day-to-day -day use, we call them gut feelings or intuitions. Now, I think this is a really amazing finding in emotion psychology, because there have been scientists who studied the human brain. Where are somatic markers stored? And it turns out a lot of people believe that somatic markers are stored in the ventromedial prefrontal cortex, which is this really interesting region at the bottom front base of the brain near the orbital frontal cortex, where we've talked about before, contains a lot of information about how we perceive emotion. Now, I wanna tell you about one research project that really blew my mind, and it was um, how does decision-making change when the ventromedial prefrontal cortex is either healthy or damaged? And remember, the ventromedial prefrontal cortex is where we think our somatic markers or gut instincts are stored. So what these scientists did was they put together an experiment where participants sat down in front of four piles of cards. Card pile A, card pile B, card pile C, card pile D and all they were told to do was draw the cards from these four piles. Now sometimes when they drew a card, they would win some money. Sounds great. But sometimes when they would draw a card, they would lose some money. Not so good. What the participants didn't know, however, was that some of the decks were rigged so that they would win more money over time. Other decks were rigged so that they would lose more money over time. So for example, maybe decks A and B were the good decks, decks C and D were the bad decks, but really it was tough to determine from the first few draws which decks were good and which decks were bad. Now, participants who have normal brains, who didn't have damage to their ventromedial prefrontal cortexes, um, they started drawing from the decks that had the good outcomes. They started to realize, uh, maybe after about 30 turns or so, that some of these decks were rigged to be good, so they drew more cards from those decks. Patients who had ventromedial prefrontal cortex damage uh, didn't have the best decision-making process, and they drew from each of the piles equally and ended up losing money over time. But now here's the kicker. Throughout this entire process of drawing cards from these four decks, the scientists measured how sweaty the participants' palms were getting because skin sweat is related to anxiety. And they hypothesized that maybe our body would know which deck was the good deck and which deck was the bad deck before our brains caught up to it. Turns out they were right because participants who had no damage to their ventromedial prefrontal cortex, after only 10 draws, after only drawing 10 cards from these decks, started to have a little bit of sweat on their palm before they decided to draw from the bad decks. They were having anticipatory anxiety about drawing from those bad decks. And the amazing part is, 
they did not consciously know at that time that those decks were bad decks. So the body knew before the mind caught up that some of those decks were good for you and some of the decks were bad for you. So I think this is really amazing evidence that our body is trying to help us to respond to fundamental life decisions that are sometimes difficult. For more interesting videos like this one, please subscribe.